So Bob Siegler was just talking about different responses to failure, and uh, in a sense, I'm going to do that too, except in the kind of narrow focus of how to profit best from um, uh, failures during learning. Okay. So, so yesterday, uh, Shadong Lin told us about two interventions that would inspire students to persevere when confronting failure rather than to say, well, I'm just too dumb to do this and throw up their hands. And um, the uh, other two were the Carol Dweck's uh, grow your brain approach where challenging yourself and overcoming failures supposedly uh, grows your brain and makes you smarter. And Xiaodong's uh, stories about scientist struggles uh, teach students that uh, uh, you know, their struggle is involved in anything worthwhile, and you, you need to sort of not be surprised that you need to be able to do some of that. Uh, but what I want to talk about is a recent dissertation uh, completed uh, here at TC under my sponsorship by Allison Lee, where she was looking at uh, uh, different responses to failure while learning something and what was the most effective, and then we wanted to teach that to another group of students. Uh, my colleague, Kathy Chase, was, was also involved in this as the next speaker in uh, this project. Okay, so the first study, we looked at uh, what strategies skilled learners uh, used when learning from a video game about electrical circuits. And our skilled learners were graduate students. We, were, we think they're skilled learners, uh, and so <laughs> that was our criteria. The, uh, and uh, in fact, let me show you this uh, game. It was very simple. It sort of looked like this. You had electrical circuits on the left, and there was always something wrong with them. On the right there, you have this sort of scowling robot that you engage in this dialogue box with. It gives you feedback and can have uh, interactions with them. And uh, so, and, and they have a cover, you know, like most video games, you have, uh, well, you can see the title here, Electropocalypse. So there's some kind of an apocalypse taking place and the way, like, you know, a power failure in a city and uh, uh, you need to repair the circuit in order to save the day there. So, um, so we had students go through there and learn, you learn about the circuitry laws and some electricity and magnetism, Ohm's law and so forth uh, going through this thing. I think most of our graduate students have probably encountered this somewhere in the dim past but forgot about it, so this is reviewing it for them. Uh, and then we, actually in all our research we're starting to uh, keep detailed logs of student interactions. I used to be, I would do pre and post tests and look at the differences. I still do that, but now I also keep logs of student interactions and we use educational dining, uh, mining method, educational uh, mining methods to go through and uh, look for patterns there. So we were able to kind of go through these logs and look at uh, what were the uh, failure response strategies that these skilled learners, graduate students were using and we found basically seven. Uh, the two most popular ones was to, if you uh, made an error there, was to restart the game level and try it again or skip to the next level and so forth. Actually, uh, those were not associated with learning anything. Um, and the, the strategy that was most associated with learning was what we call information seeking and then fixing. Namely, within the game, you could go and uh, look up information related to the problem that you're currently working on, and then, uh, based upon that, presumably fix uh, what you did, and then you sort of move on. So that was most of it. That was actually ranked number seven, <laughs> the most popular strategy. So what worked the best was not what people were doing. Although notably, the, the restart the game level and skip and stuff, those are uh, strategies that require little or no effort, okay? Whereas the information seeking and fixing required a substantial amount of effort, so that's one of the problems there. So he said, okay, we found now a, uh, an effective strategy that's most associated with learning from this game. Uh, so let's take some uh, less skilled learners, maybe high school students, and we're going to have them go through the game and, uh, and learn this stuff. And we're going to teach them the strategy. And we also taught them a, a couple of alternatives there. Uh, 
not just being globally aware of how much you know about this topic. Uh, there's some researchers in the area that, that think that that's what failures uh, do for you uh, when you're learning like this. And uh, so you learn about this, these strategies through this interactions with this robot there. So the, the uh, strategy is taught within the context of the game itself. It kind of is a nudge uh, for something to do. So this, this study replicated in that sense of success. So the first one in that the students, in fact, in all our conditions, uh, there were three, uh, were um, who used this information plus fixing strategy learned the most. Okay, so that was great. However, we had a failure here too, <laughs> namely that uh, teaching this strategy within the context of the game did not in fact uh, convince the students to use it. Okay, so that leads us to a, a challenge. So we know what an effective strategy is here for learning from failure within the learning context. Uh, but uh, the challenge is how to get students to use this strategy. So even when we explicitly taught them, I mean, this is what you're supposed to do and having that stern looking robot doing it, you know. Uh, <laughs> who knows what he'll do if you don't, right? <laughs> um, uh, was insufficient, okay? And uh, in fact, I've encountered this before where teaching effective uh, uh, strat cognitive strategies uh, do not in fact necessarily uh, convince the students to use it. Uh, another example would be the control variable strategy for scientific reasoning. And uh, but one of the characteristics of these more effective strategies is um, uh, they require more effort, typically. Yeah. So maybe one thing we need to do is to uh, inspire the students or motivate them uh, to put in this extra effort uh, to, in order to do a better job there. Uh, so as I say, you can see this uh, looking up information, figuring out you know, what the nature of the, the error was and fixing the error uh, before you go on requires substantially more effort than just skipping along or recycling the beginning and trying again and so forth. So maybe we need to combine this with these uh, Xiaodong Lin struggle stories or Carol Dweck's brain growth uh, intervention in order to motivate this uh, more effort. Uh, or perhaps we need an intervention that to uh, uh, convince them, maybe they're just not convinced, the fact that we told them this is the best strategy used Maybe that's not sufficient, and we need to do something in order to, to convince them to do that. So anyhow, so the partial success and failure in this uh, study, study this, uh, pair of studies, you know, is kind of leading us to, to, to further research in this area. But I think this is an important thing to look at. It's not just saying, well, you know, if you have a failure, you're supposed to, uh, you know, persevere through that and, and keep going, but also to, to kind of document what are the strat effective strategies uh, for doing that and benefiting from this failure? Okay, that's fine.